Good morning. You're watching Venture Forward, a video series about vehicle-supported adventure, backcountry exploration, and full-time mobile living. Right now it's August 2022, and Shannon and I are in southeastern Vermont at a lovely campground where I'm tending to my broken foot. A few weeks ago I fractured my fifth metatarsal. This week I thought it'd be cool to feature all the vehicles of Venture Forward in one video. Basically any adventure rig that we've had an extended travel experience in, and not limited to just those we own. Six vehicles, one of which I haven't really talked about before, each one a four-wheel drive adventure mobile with its own unique strengths and weaknesses. Let's get started. This first vehicle predates Venture Forward by about 10 years, but I'm including it in this list because the experience helped spark what I do today. It gave me my first taste of living and wandering in a compact, high-mobility RV. Back in 2008, well before I started making videos, I was hired by the vehicle's new owner to transport the Jeep from a car dealer in Pennsylvania to Earth Roamer's HQ in Denver, Colorado, where it would be refreshed and prepared for a transfer of ownership. The new owner also very graciously invited me to put it to use and to get to know it so I could test its functionality and report any issues back to Earth Roamer. The Jeep conversion is the long discontinued Earth Roamer XV JP, which was introduced shortly after the advent of the four door Jeep Wrangler JK. Unfortunately, production didn't last very long as Earth Roamer only made 12. I asked them why the project was so short-lived, and they replied that it was too costly to build for a niche vehicle with not enough demand. Basically, Earth Roamer took a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, removed the top, gutted everything behind the front two seats, and permanently installed a composite camper body with an integrated pop-up tent, featuring a queen-size bed and all the comforts of home. It had bench seating, a small dinette, generous soft storage, refrigerator, freezer, 80-watt solar panel, an AGM battery bank, a 4-gallon hot water heater, 25-gallon fresh water tank, a 10-gallon gray tank, a cassette toilet, gasoline heater, and an indoor shower. All of this on the capable Jeep Wrangler Rubicon chassis with an asking price of around $110,000 at the time. It was clear that Earth Roamer innovated hard to realize the XVJP, and that's what was so cool about this RV. It wasn't perfect, but it demonstrated what was possible, and it definitely got me thinking about living full-time in a Jeep. I loved that it was on the Rubicon chassis. It was truly a compact, high-mobility RV that you could drive anywhere, whether along an Alpine 2-track or down a densely overgrown jungle road. The tent and sleeping platform deployed and stowed with the touch of a button, utilizing a small electric winch. The queen-size bed was extremely comfortable. The gasoline heater was a welcome and efficient source of heat in the mountains, which is what inspired me to make a similar modification to my own Jeep. And the living space featured a hidden shower pan with a curtain set up so one could actually take a hot shower inside the vehicle. And it had a cassette toilet, much like the one we currently have in our Winnebago Rebel. The most glaring issue that I encountered with the XVJP was that the tent didn't keep the rain out. I had deployed the camper at a rest area in Kansas one stormy night, and between the wind noise and the rain getting in, sleeping up in the camper wasn't happening. I ended up closing the tent platform and sleeping on the floor down below, which was very uncomfortable. And unrelated to the camper conversion, at the top of Mosquito Pass in Colorado, I had found that the Jeep's anti-sway bar had inverted, and the end links had tacoed, which subsequently interfered with steering. I suspect that the end links were too short for the suspension lift, allowing the sway bar to flip around, as I've never encountered this before in my own Jeep. It wasn't a huge problem, and Earth Roamer took care of it, but it did prompt me to conclude the trip. Would I want an original Earth Roamer XV JP today? Not really. I absolutely love the concept, but it was complex and imperfect, and honestly it asked a lot from the chassis, which was never designed to be an RV. Do I wish that Earth Roamer continued the project? Absolutely. I can't imagine the costs involved to design and engineer the vehicle, but I do believe Earth Roamer was onto something. I can't help but think that by now, over a dozen years later, the XVJP would be greatly improved, much more refined, and 
also probably in greater demand. My own Jeep, which you might be well acquainted with by now, is a 2013 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon. While it's not quite as thorough a conversion as the XVJP, it serves the same purpose. A comfortable and compact overland vehicle suited for both backcountry exploration and full-time mobile living. I purchased RNG in 2015 with absolutely no expectation that I'd ever live in the Jeep full time. However, I was very much an overland travel enthusiast and I wanted to outfit the Jeep for comfortable road trips and backcountry adventures. One of the first things I got for the Jeep was the Ursa Minor J30 camper top. And after it was installed, I recalled my experience in the XVJP and I think that's when the wheels started turning in my head about going mobile. Fast forward to today, 2022, I spent a solid four years living in the Jeep full time and traveling throughout the US and Canada. In addition to the Ursa Minor camper, the Jeep is equipped with a goose gear plate system, an ARB 12 volt fridge, ARB awning, an AEV suspension, Genesis dual battery kit, long range America auxiliary gas tank, a worn 10,000 pound winch, and a Sunflare 100 watt solar panel. When I first set off in the Jeep, it was very simple and mostly stock, but after about 150,000 miles of adventure, it's been refined, repaired, upgraded, refined some more. It has been through so much and it's so well dialed in at this point that it's irreplaceable to me. The bread is naan. It has Mexican cheese, pizza sauce, and Canadian bacon. So I don't know what you'd call this, but it's pretty good. Since the inception of this video series, Venture Forward has been proudly sponsored by OK Four Wheel Drive, a vehicle outfitter and alu cab dealer located in Stortsville, New Jersey. The folks at OK help keep the wheels turning on Orangey, and every now and then they let me take one of their outfitted vehicles on an adventure, starting with their 2017 Toyota Tacoma. The first time I took the Tacoma out in the mountains of Colorado, it was equipped with an ARB bull bar, air lockers, an old man emu suspension, and a kayak camper by Alucab. What an awesome day. First of all, Ure is amazing. I spent a few hours there. I was happy to walk around and experience some of the shops and uh, that pizza really hit the spot. I've been in the truck for two days now and I'm pretty happy with it so far. Uh, as far as comfort goes, it's very similar to the Jeep, and that's across the board. That's uh, driving comfort, 
uh, sleeping comfort. Uh, this is more spacious than the Jeep inside, but um, it's still the type of platform that invites you to be outside and around it. The Kaya Camper is an aluminum slide-in bed camper with a pop-up akin to that of a hard shell rooftop tent. The camper was kitted out with solar, propane, water, storage, electric, a small basin, and a propane cooktop. The advantage of this model is that you can remove the camper entirely after your adventure and use your pickup bed for other things. The next time I took the Tacoma out a couple years later, it had new graphics and was equipped with an Alucab Canopy Camper, which looks very similar to the Kaya Camper at a glance. But it installs permanently on the rails of the truck bed and grants the owner the creativity to outfit the interior however they'd prefer. In this case, OK Four Wheel Drive kitted out the inside of the bed with a goose gear storage system. Which do I like better? If it were mine, I'd prefer the Canopy Camper by Alucab. It seems to offer more versatility and allows one to make the most of their bed space, while the Kaya Camper is still a great option for those who need to free up their truck bed at the end of the trip. This next vehicle is a little bit different. Long story short, in 2020, I met my wonderful girlfriend, Shannon. She had an apartment in Denver when we first met, but her job allowed her to work remotely. Things were going really well. She's amazing, and we wanted to make a go of it. So later that year, we bought a 2021 Winnebago Revel to supplement my 2013 Jeep Wrangler. That way I could continue exploring and making videos in the Jeep and the Revel would serve as a base camp and a mobile office for both of us. Our 2021 Winnebago Revel is a four-wheel drive Class B RV based on a 2020 Mercedes Sprinter. We've outfitted it with a suspension by Agile Off-Road for a bit more off-highway capability and a room rig battery upgrade, giving us a total of five lithium-ion batteries and a 3000 watt inverter. It has a comfortable dinette with two captain's chairs, a full bed, 12 volt fridge, a 21 gallon fresh water tank with a 21 gallon gray tank, an enclosed bathroom with a cassette toilet, a shower, induction cooktop, 215 watts of solar, a diesel furnace, air conditioning, and a continuous water heater. The 2020 Sprinter's four wheel drive system is I'll be honest, I have no idea how it works or what it's doing most of the time. It's rear wheel drive for regular driving, while four wheel drive and low range are selectable via buttons on the dashboard. Computers are responsible for power distribution. Applying pressure to the accelerator is more like a suggestion from the driver, and then the computer a uh, borderline sociopathic AI decides how to respond to that suggestion. It leaves the Mercedes plant as a cargo van, and you can sort of tell. So with that in mind, the four-wheel drive system is very respectable for what it is. It's not the platform I'd choose for rugged backcountry exploration, but you can, and people do. And that's what makes it so cool. The relatively compact size and four-wheel drive capability are what allow us to go a little farther off-grid than most other Class B RVs out there. So with the Revel, you don't have to settle for the crowded boondocking area just off pavement. You can go much farther in and find a much nicer campsite than that. Computers aside, the Sprinter's capability will surprise you. I absolutely love our van. It's not perfect. It's an RV, and I think with any RV, you'll have a lot of bugs to work out. However, it is wonderfully comfortable, adequately capable, with an active community and a decent aftermarket. If you want turnkey travel and adventure, this is it.
Another vehicle from OK Four Wheel Drive. I greatly enjoyed this 2019 Ram 3500 equipped with an Overland Explorer Vehicles HBE flatbed camper. The diesel-powered one-ton Ram had a robust four-wheel drive system and low range that effortlessly handled everything I threw at it. We drove it up into the mountains in Colorado with ease. It was a little bit large to squeeze down narrow, lightly traveled tracks, but its overall capability opened up a wealth of remote camping opportunities. Hudson Bay Edition bed camper from Overland Explorer Vehicles was superb. It featured an all composite and aluminum construction with no water staples, lithium ion power, a Truma propane heater, 38 gallon fresh water tank, stainless sink and cooktop, solar, a queen size bed, and a spacious dinette with bench seating. When camp was deployed, this setup was very spacious and comfortable. The camper interior was light and airy, and there was sufficient room for two people to cohabitate. I was a big fan of the Truma heater, which was fast and efficient, and served up one of the best open air showers I've had in recent memory. In the context of full-time mobile living, there was a little bit of friction accessing the camper while out running errands. It was so high off the ground that it would require climbing and awkward hunkering to put the groceries away. That's my only criticism, and it applies to any camper, not just the OEV. Ease of access is extremely important to minimize fatigue during extended travel. So maybe you're considering full-time mobile living with a uh, backcountry bias. You might go with a compact SUV with a rooftop tent, a mid-size pickup with a dry camper, a full-size pickup with a bed camper, or a van or Class B RV. There is no right or wrong type of vehicle. You have to go with a vehicle in which you're comfortable and the vehicle that makes you smile. I said that before, that's extremely important. We can be as pragmatic as possible, but when it comes down to it, the platform has to bring you joy. At one point in late 2021, the Jeep needed a new engine. Well, it didn't need a new engine. It had an engine timing issue. But at 193,000 miles, I was advised that it might make more sense to replace the engine due to all of the work involved. So while the Jeep was in the shop getting a heart transplant, I needed something reliable to drive temporarily. So I got a 1991 Land Rover Defender 110 high capacity pickup truck with 200,000 miles on it. No fancy modifications, no sleeping platform. It's just a truck, it's old and beat up, it doesn't make any sense, and I love it. I've been wanting a Defender like this for decades, and the old Camel Trophy pictures are to blame for that. Pictures of yellow Defenders and Discoveries traveling through the jungle, traversing terrain that looks otherwise insurmountable. In my opinion, there are very few four-wheel drive vehicles that embody romanticized overland adventure quite like the classic Land Rover Defender. Did you put, do you have the clutch in? Clutch is in, brakes. 
break us off. Do you need me to push? No, no, no. Got this. It's not going to take very much. <laughs> You're the one that parked it. Yeah, it's on a hill. We parked here intentionally. I know. So yeah, great idea. Going into town for pizza. And Oops. Truck that there we go. Start. There we go. There we go. This feels super safe. Yes. <laughs> Pizza's gonna taste good after that hard work. Did we lock them in? I did. Okay. Here we go. One thing that I really like about this truck is how well it crawls in low range first gear. When I encounter a field of rocks and I need to pick my line very carefully, I can put it in first gear, let my feet off the pedals completely, and focus on my steering. The truck will tiptoe across the rocks without stalling and it gets it done very gracefully. I still own it as of July 2022. It's at a friend's house in Utah, and I said before that I'm going to sell it, and I think I'm going to sell it, but I'm not sure. So I think I'll leave it at that. We'll circle back to the Land Rover and figure things out. It's just about three weeks after the initial injury, and I'm noticeably regaining my mobility. I can walk around without much discomfort, except the boot itself is a little bit awkward. The doctor says I'll probably have the boot on for another few weeks, but things are looking good, and I've got my basic mobility. And as long as I'm comfortable, we can resume traveling, which we are. As of today, we're leaving this campground that we were at for two weeks, and, uh, we're heading out. I'm gonna call that a wrap for the week, but just as a reminder, my detailed GPS data is available to Patreon subscribers, and I've got points of interest on the Thatch app for iOS and Android. I'll put links to Patreon and Thatch in the description for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.